Now it's time to, to take a look at the French press. Belle Lupton is here with us on set. Welcome, Belle. It's all about work this morning. It certainly is. In the French papers, it certainly is. So it's all work and no play, or at least that is what the critics of France's work minister are saying. Uh, so François Rebsamen, the work minister in France, is going to present a bill today to the National Assembly. He wants to simplify things for French businesses. Uh, he wants to make it easier, essentially, for employees and businesses to do their job. Now, the bill he's presenting uh, is making things easier for companies with over 50 people, 50 employees, but it's also imposing new new rules on companies that have less than 10 employees. And that's where we get this headline from Le Figaro, anger of small company bosses against the Rebsamen law. So they're obviously, these bosses are angry because they think their job is going to be made even harder by these new rules for these small companies. Le Figaro, which is a conservative paper, says that this bill is far too much in the thrall of the unions. Uh, it has a, an editorial on its front page as well, which says Manuel Valls, the prime minister, can claim his love of business on a daily basis, but the government he leads shows no signs of that love. Um, now, the communist paper L'Humanité uh, sees that law just a little differently. It says, actually, the bosses do pretty well out of this. Uh, Reb Samen seeks to impose the boss's voice. That's its, uh, that's its headline there. Um, the paper condemns the general philosophy of the bill, though, and it's, it talks about its Talk about, talks about a less formal dialogue, which according to L'Humanité will damage employees of companies and their representatives, i.e. the unions. Uh, so obviously L'Humanité being communist, more on the side of the unions than Le Figaro. Uh, then we've got Les Echos, which is a pro-business uh, paper here, or a, a paper with a business slant. It uh, talks about, uh, it interviews rather, one of the France's, uh, the leaders of one of France's biggest unions, Jean-Claude Mailly, and he says here, you can see on that headline, I fear for a move towards the Anglo-Saxon model. Obviously, that freer uh, regulation of businesses there. Now, what are the things outli outlined in this new law is to do with the way French pensions are decided. Uh, it's all to do with the level or intensity of your work, which can increase uh, your pension later on. How does that work? How does the intensity of your work, how is that even, uh, how is that even measured? Well, it's a bit of a French peculiarity because the pensions are high. In France, uh, it's operated on a points-based system. So you get your pension on a points-based system. And if you do work in difficult circumstances, you get more points. Uh, so the paper, this is L'Opinion, a pro-business paper, and it says that a report submitted to the Prime Minister Manuel Valls today is going to suggest simplifying the categories in which you, you decide how you're going to get your pension. Uh, now, the paper says perhaps unsurprisingly, that this is not enough to rectify the over-complex system that's already in place. And it quotes the head of MEDEF, which is the biz biggest business lobbying uh, lobby in France, who grumbles to the government, don't ruin our, our return to confidence, just when we're getting back to confidence, don't stop it all now. Um, Libération, which is a more of a left-leaning paper, has a very different take on the whole question. It has on its front page an article about overwork. So it's stressing the, the problem of overwork. Um, it has an interview with Benoit Hamon, who's a Socialist Party member. Now, he is much further left than Hollande's government. And you can see this man who looks fairly stressed and overworked. This interview says uh, he's asked the government here to recognise work-related fatigue as a medical illness. So this is forcing businesses to take responsibility for burnout, uh, an English word there, we all recognise that, which he says is more and more prevalent in France. Now, there's something that's being criticized from all sides, I guess something that everybody can agree on, and the power of the veto uh, is being talked about by the government uh, in this. It is being talked about. Now, this is in an, an article with Le Monde, so it's an interview with the work minister who we've been hearing about already today. Now, he says he isn't opposed to using the power of veto if he needs to, to pass this bill even though he says, I don't want to. So obviously this is paving the way for the government to just get this bill through without worrying about what Parliament says, if it needs to. Now, Reb Samem is also very close to the president and he used this opportunity in Le Monde to express his support for 
Hollande. He says there are still two years left for the French people to realise that François Hollande is a great president. And he says that he wants Hollande to run again for president on the Socialist Party ticket in 2017. Now, the opposition party is also gearing up for the 2017 general election. Is uh, Nicolas Sarkozy going to run or is he not? Well, according to Le Figaro, uh, Sarko is gathering his close allies around him. So they say that, so this is the UMP, is his party. New name, new team, new positions. Sarkozy gathers his family, they say, around him. So the UMP is meeting this Saturday for its party conference. And all of this is looking forward to the 2017 primaries. But it seems like Sarkozy is slowly gathering up his troops. All right, well, finally, let's end with four new figures in Paris's Pantheon. Tell us about that. Who are they? So Paris's Pantheon is normally where you find the distinguished figures from France's past, and now there are four new figures that are going to be in there. Uh, now, La Croix, a Catholic paper, focuses on the two women amongst these four. So that's Germaine Tillon and Genevieve de Gaulle Antonioz. Now, these two were in the resistance, and there, there's an interview in La Croix with uh, a historian who's found a rather nice photo that we can see there, a black and white photo from 1944, of these fighters, these female fighters, holding aloft their weapons in Marseille just before the arrival of the Allied troops. And Lacroix says this is a wonderful sign that finally the role of French women in the Résistance is being recognized. Thanks so much, Belle Upton. You'll be back later for a look at the International Press Review.